They always say the best inspiration in Planet Zoo is real life. When I had no inspiration for a tiger habitat in a community zoo, I took it upon myself to search for something to recreate. But being the mess that I am, I also took it too far. 150 kilometers to be exact. I went to the damn zoo myself because online photos weren't showing me enough details. And apparently I chose one of the best zoos in Europe. But is it though? Paradisa is famous for beautiful gardens, immersive theming and a large collection of animals. The Bengal tiger lives in the Southeast Asian area called the Kingdom of Ganesha, named after the god of wisdom and beginnings. It's a massive Cambodian area that's very impressive in real life. And the whole zoo is impressive. It was a fun day with many oohs and ahs. <laughs> But then I took a deep dive and it escalated. I found a negative site where the zoo is criticized for prioritizing guests over animal welfare. Something I've never heard before because the praise was always louder. And they say the Bengal tigers have it worst of all, with a space that's way too small and bare if you ignore the theming. And the sibling tigers Mumbai and Sanka are even more controversial, because they're white. White tigers are often falsely marketed as a rare species. But they're really Bengal tigers with a unique mutant gene, artificially selected through inbreeding going back to the 50s. We haven't seen a white tiger in the wild since then, so their existence is sensitive and profit-driven. Luckily, Paradisa is a member of the European Association of Zoos and Aquaria, who recognize these problems and want to phase out white tigers in captivity. But on their only education board and official website, Paradisa calls the white tiger a symbol of preservation efforts, while in reality they're a symbol of human fascination for pretty things. And Mumbai and Sanka are pretty. So is their enclosure. It's very impressive with a strong contrast between nature green and Cambodian grey. It spoke to my imagination and the whole zoo wowed me. It got me thinking because it shows the complexity of balancing animal needs with guest entertainment. And it's a very thin line to cross. And I crossed that line as well. I chose this habitat over others because it looks cool. Compared to this one, habitats like Singapore and San Diego look generic. But it didn't sit right with me to recreate a controversial habitat without further thought, even though it's beautiful. So let's see what Planet Zoo thinks. Is Paradisa's tiger habitat really that bad? Social group. Tigers are solitary animals and both the Association of Zoos and the Zoopedia advise to keep no more than two adults in one exhibit. Check. Traversable area. Measuring the real enclosure, there's a square split into two, a temple tower two thirds in, and a skewed rectangle building in the back. This building isn't part of a traversable area in real life because it's closed off. I'm hoping it's a backstage area for healthcare and sleeping. And the back side is a guest area with a fountain. The front area of the habitat is split into two, with the front being a pool. And this is a traversable area in real life. From visual memory and footage I took while I was at Paradisa, I was able to start building the enclosure pretty close to real life measurements. I found that the twilight mason pieces worked out really well when I played around with some grey colors, and I started winging it piece by piece, mostly going with Asian and Indonesian pieces. I tried to keep the same proportions as in real life with my footage on my second screen to go back and forth. It was a lot of detail work, which I'm not used to, but I actually ended up having a lot of fun, because it was a good exercise during one of my hyperfixations. After a while I did realize I was going a bit too far with the detailing, because I still needed to test the traversable area itself. So I brought in the two tigers. Of course, not white ones. Which is actually funny because Planet Zoo also plays with the same tension between animals and guests, because we can also breed white tigers. Noting that the tigers don't have access to the backstage area in real life, the traversable area is not enough and shows up orange. However, here's where it gets tricky. If you paid attention, the Zoopedia doesn't give tigers any water requirements, which is very interesting because tigers are good swimmers and use it to their advantage for hunting and cooling off. 
Even the first thing these two did was dive in, and they really enjoyed themselves. And according to both the European and American associations of zoos and aquaria, all tiger exhibits should include water pools or a running stream. And they even encourage deeper pools. So if we remove the water and replace it with land, Planet Zoo will recognize the traversable area as enough. In this case, it seems Paradisa has a better judgment on exhibit guidelines because they include two water sources. The larger deep pool in the front, which I built, and a smaller pool in the back. But this one was a bit more difficult because of all the terrain work, so let's just ignore that one. It would seem neither is perfect, but the lack of water requirements in the game is interesting as it's one of the requirements in real life. So half check? Hard shelter. One of the biggest critiques for the real life habitat is that the tigers don't have enough shelter to hide from the weather. The only hard shelter they have is underneath a separation in the middle and a small overhang on the front temple where the tigers are mostly seen napping. And according to the Zopedia, this is more than enough and shows up green. I didn't even think about hard shelter up until now, so that was a pleasant surprise. Point for Paradisa. Stress. Another critique is that the tigers don't have any hiding spots from the guests. The tigers can't hide behind anything other than the trees and the guests can show up everywhere. You can enter the habitat through two hallways. There's a main hallway which is open and frontal to the tigers and the side hallway has a few full walls and glass viewing spots. Do you want to talk? Then talk. <laughs> On top of that, quite literally, is a staircase going up to the freaking roof, where people can look around into the habitat. While I'm not testing out whether these tigers get stressed because this is a sandbox zoo, I do agree with the criticism in real life. Because it got me thinking and I realized we went to the zoo on a very hot day and almost all of the animals were hiding in cool buildings, most away from the guests as well. And the tigers didn't have that. We're also still in the orange for the traversable area because I'm not removing the water. So a simple fix to at least acknowledge the criticism is to open up the skewed building in the back and the Zoopedia shows up green. Well, apart from too much short grass, but easy fix. Another check. Guest entertainment. With the enclosure pretty much done, it was time to start detailing and working on the whole area. The plot I had to build in for the community zoo was actually about the same size as the main tiger area in Paradisa, so all the pieces fell together. The largest and maybe most impressive element of the Kingdom of Ganesha might be the enormous rice fields that really show off the attention to detail and culture. My friend, who's a real traveler at heart and has been to Cambodia, even said the whole area feels real. According to Paradisa, the whole area was designed by Asian artists, and I think that's quite impressive. Because rice fields are visually stunning, I wanted to try it as well. I decided not to put any water though, because one, it would probably annoy the hell out of me to make it work, and two, the community zoo has apparently become a bit big for a few PCs of members, so I really didn't want to make it worse. I say that while I added like a thousand pieces on the building. Yeah. I did want to add movement because the tigers are completely removed from sight unless you're in the temple, which is a good thing. So I started adding waterfalls and a big water wheel as if they built an agricultural system. Then came the main street of the Ganesha area, which is opened by an impressive Cambodian arch. We unfortunately don't have any pieces in the game that looks like it, so I tried to pull something off with the Indonesian pieces. I think it looks nice though. I think that still fits, seeing as Indonesia is also Southeast Asian. On the other side of the real life enclosure is a garden of the senses, which is basically a smaller pathway with a lot of textures like pebbles, water and wood on which you can walk barefoot. I decided to make it a bit more simple and just made a small Asian garden area inspired by both Bali and Japan. I wanted to play with the foliage of Asia a bit more so I added in a lot of color as well and I think it ended up looking cute and I would love to go here and just sit and relax, maybe read a book. 
I didn't want to get repetitive, however, and decided not to continue the garden along the whole area, which is done in real life, and I broke it up by adding a structure inspired by the Wat Banam temple in Cambodia, mimicking the one I saw in the park. But while adding in the details and trying to fill out the whole area, I started noticing something very telling. The tension of animal welfare versus guest entertainment. You see, I suddenly noticed that I hadn't seen the tigers in a long time, and this is a tiger habitat build, so it was kind of weird. I started noticing a hell of a lot of cap fillers and useless spaces that could be offered to the tigers instead. Looking at the zoo from above, the tiger habitat is here. You can tell there's not a lot of space for the animals. The orange is a small habitat for wild boar between the rice fields, two cranes on a Japanese-inspired island, and a Cambodian habitat for servo cats. And that's it! The whole area in blue is for the guests. There's a Thai restaurant shaped like a boat, the rice fields, a fountain, the Garden of the Senses, and a huge temple you can climb to look over the Cambodian and African areas. <laughs> <laughs> As an example for beautiful but sometimes outrageously insane theming, this area is a toilet. From afar it looks like a beautiful garden or even an exhibit, but nope, it's just a toilet. So I also built that in the game. But I was tired of building rice fields and areas without purpose. So I took the liberty to add more space for the tigers. I added a large outside area above the rice fields, and I added a more closed off area to the other side with a tiger bridge that actually works. I was very proud because this was the first time I did it. Guests can walk beneath it and enjoy a stroll in a foliage filled forest. And this isn't just a random choice in my head because I wanted to see the tigers again. These additions actually fit the natural behavior of tigers to observe from higher ground. Conclusion Despite the criticism, Paradisa's enclosure meets the needs for tigers, but some will argue at the bare minimum. Which brings up the question, is the bare minimum enough? People argue that zoos need to entertain guests to keep a steady income, which they can use for maintenance and preservation efforts. And Paradisa has done so. By the end of this year, they'll return two pandas to China, and they're currently building the Sanctuary, a hybrid structure where Amazonian tropical species can be housed in a natural environment. Look, going from this silly experiment, I think it's safe to assume there's a very thin line between entertainment and animal welfare. The majority of this build would have become gap fillers for aesthetic more than the welfare for tigers. There's no denying, however, they're such beautiful animals. I've learned a lot from them over the past week, and I even appreciate them more in-game now. And there's one positive thing I want to end with. This enclosure, both in real life and in-game, is inspired by Cambodia. It gets a lot of more meaning when you learn that tigers were declared functionally extinct in Cambodia in 2016, with the last one seen in 2007 in Mondulkiri. By the end of 2024, however, Cambodia plans to reintroduce four Indian tigers to restore the population. And this is another name for Bengal tigers. This actually marks a historical event. The first cooperation between Cambodia and India for tiger preservation. It represents a significant step towards conservation and ecological restoration. For this reason, I think it's fitting that I chose a real-life habitat inspired by Cambodia and made it hopefully better.